Greetings lads and lasses. My master dual box detox welcomes you to today's lecture of how to get good at Zasalimal. And here we go. Aside from your obligation to pick up this glorious African on Black History Month, this 6 foot tall dark handsome cyclopes is one of the most satisfying characters to play once you understand how to navigate him precisely, which I'm going to help you with today. You might be wondering if he is so satisfying to play, why aren't there many playing him online and on top levels? The answer is simple. Everyone is racist. Just kidding. The reason behind this is twofold. Navigating him to optimal gameplay is way more multi-layered and multi-branched that the average uninformed casual would be wondering, why isn't he doing a lot of damage? Or, what more could there be to a simplistic move list like his? My second reasoning is that Zasalamal is a high commitment character, even for top players. There is even a move that requires you to study it harder than the entire history of quantum physics. In a world where the least brain power consumption is the meter, you won't find many committing to juggling 3 to 4 combo routes for every combo starter. I have a well documented history of being a lizard brain myself, but even I know the value of character loyalty. If me and my 3 brain cells can make playing magic Egyptian boy look like playing 5D chess, imagine what you can do with him if you exceeded my brain cell count. If you're familiar with Soul Calibur 6, you'll realize that unlike its sibling Tekken 7, where everything is universal, every character in this game in its stead has an internal cheat code. And so I bring up Tekken Jesus again to testify to this. Soul Calibur 6 is kind of like Guilty Gear or like an anime game. What I mean by that is each character seems to have their own subsystem that breaks the rules of the global game. Uh, Zazmasol, you know, the black guy with the scythe, his little subsystem is that he does certain moves that allow him to stock up levels of this time freeze that he has. So he can freeze time and, you know, you build that up. And that's his little gimmick. In other words, playing the Salamal is the closest thing you have to activating a Zavordo. Step 1. Bitch Slap. There are two slaps to bitch your opponents with. Feel free to confuse them to oblivion with it. Step 2. Zabwardo. There are 7 of these to further torment your opposition with them. Step 3. Repeat Step 1. To as a Salamal player, the rotation of these two steps is the ultimate bread and butter. It is the vehicle that carries out any game plan you might have to its destination. You can stack up up to 3 Terra Spheres to gain extended combos, to gain safety and block pressure or to gain a guaranteed guard break. If all of this is already hurting your brain, I don't really blame you, but it's about to get worse. Depending on the number of clock C4s you have planted, your optimal combo route will differ between 3 to 4 combos per starter. The good news is that, damage potential is disgustingly high, the higher you stack up these curses. <laughs> the bad news is that you will need to learn three times the combos everyone is learning with the other characters. But fear not fellow lizard brains. I have been of service to my kind and condensed that towering list into a series of four digestible videos. As a Jigus main, I will preach to you the same gospel I preached one year ago. Wall. That's right the wall. Or in this case, to the end of every stage. Not because this is all I know, but because it is 10 times more rewarding with Zasalimal. You may never hear this from a Tekken player, but, wall combos in Soul Calibur 6 are far more devastating 
where Tekken grants you a single splat per launch. Sometimes two splats, if special season to conditions are fulfilled. Soul Calibur 6 grants you a total of two long-winded wall splats with no strings attached, often a death sentence fighting someone like the Salomon. He can either catch you in this infinite Tsokuyumi, or straight up deliver you to the Shadow Realm. And you better hope you are carried over to a wall, and not to an edge of a stage. This sorcerer can escort you to your exit quicker than an angry bouncer in a nightclub. This is no surprise to an OG caliber player. This man has been in the ring out business since 2005. Finally, you have to understand what a minus 12 means to you as a Zass player, in contrast to the rest of the characters. This is what you get for having an opponent being minus 12. This is what everyone else gets for a minus 12. C4. No C4. C4. No C4. I hope this paints a good picture, where everyone else can shrug off that kind of punishment. To someone facing the Salamal, it can be a terrifying thing. Muhammad Abdul will only need 3 of those to secure a round with ease, and blindly whiffing moves will only add to the PTSD they're about to receive, forcing them to either do more dumb shit turtle in terror, or do their fucking homework. Moral of the story, if you are versus Zass, don't be minus 12 you dumbass. Up next, are your key moves. I have categorized them differently, starting with your risky essentials. 6k, I have already spoken about the importance of 6k, but make no mistake, this move is riskier than asking Khabib for his location. It's a high linear, minus 12 on block, and despite your frame advantage, completely useless out of point blank range. 3A series, this move grants you 4 different mix ups, and it is perfect for dictating your own pace, and force your opponents, to sit the fuck down and block, however, this game has been out for over 3 years, and people can reverse you know that shit back at you, if you're not careful. 6A series. In terms of utility, this is just another 3A series, but far more riskier and disgustingly rewarding in exchange. This too can be you know reversed, spam this and you're just asking to get caught with your pants down in 4K. 6. 6A. A whiff punisher and a curse applier, but it can be just as easily nullified if you don't pick your spots with it. 2. 2B. This is by far the Salamol's best launcher for the range it covers, and the amount of highs it ducks under. I'd be surprised, if there's anyone who isn't relying on it. However, it is still linear, and minus 16 on block. 4. 6B. I'd be lying, if I said, that throwing this move raw, isn't straight up suicide. But this move comes in handy, when you already have planted your terror seeds. It grants you a ridiculous amount of damage. For just as little as a single curse. It can both pressure and be a get out of jail card in certain situations. Now comes your safe essentials list. These moves will either keep you safe on block or still retains your offensive pressure. 4A. This move widens your offensive range, further forcing your opponents to sit the fuck down and block. And with few curses, it might just be a death sentence. Its only weaknesses are its slow start of frames, and it being a high hitting move. But who would even think about ducking at tip range, when all is waiting for you is this. 6BB. Using this as a segue, let me introduce to you your second tip terrorism tactic. Aside from its verticality, there is no reason for you to not use this at all times. The safety, the guard damage, and the two potential lethal hits it grants you is enough to shift any round to your favor. 3k. Or what I like to call, but slap type 2. Unlike type 1. This one is both mid hitting and safe on block. Most people can't distinguish between the two. Feel free to use it to bait out a dumb reaction. 2. 2b plus k. In my opinion, this is by far the best newly added tool to the Salamals kit. It covers a whole range of shenanigans that we were not able to whiff punish beforehand. You would think something like this would be punishable on block. But it's not. It's completely safe. 4A plus B. This move used to be so bad that it used to get us insta-killed for accidentally pressing it. 
A single patch has reversed all of that shit, making it the most improved Zasalimal tool to date. Safe on block. Second most damaging curse applier. And most importantly, Zasalimal's best guard damaging tool. Critical edge. And finally, what is arguably considered the best CE in the entire game. Ridiculous damage. Safe on block. A curse applier whether you like it or not. And depending on the curse count, can deflect as much as a small planet. For the sake of everyone's sanity and well-being, the devs have decided to make this a vertical move. Pokes. Or what everyone else in the community refers to as. Small caliber. The moves I'm about to list is what's going to dictate your skill set on a deep fundamental level. Neglect this, and you would be no different than someone using a loaded pistol as a hairbrush. AA. A6. BB. 1. 1B. 4B. K. 2. To K. 6. 6KB. 6. 6B. Full crouch 3K. While rising K. Talking about all these reasons on why you should pick this glorious black man. It is only fair to let you know what you are getting yourselves into. Like every character in this game, he isn't devoid of weaknesses. His first noticeable drawback is that his lows are as threatening as an upset Hasbulla. People can either see it coming from 300 miles away or it will do almost no damage that you mind as well toss Hasbulla at their feet. Secondly, his meter usage outside of CE are so underwhelming that you mind as well sit on your two bars for a good last minute deflect, making pushing them away out of fear with soul charge your best next option. For a 6 foot man, wielding an oversized mid ranged weapon, you would think his keep out game would be impeccable. But no, that is not the case here. In fact his keep out comes at a price of pushing them away after dealing your set of damage to them. Despite that being to your advantage or not. Lastly, you will need to be content with verticals occasionally clipping you, even if you have acquired the IQ and defensive maneuvers of Floyd Mayweather. The game has decided that Zass have the hurt box of a conjoined twins at the hip, and there's nothing we can do about it. I'm behind you! Before I conclude this guide, I will leave you with this tiny bit of insight. The Salamal's design philosophy and entire battle plan revolves around one thing, and one thing only. EMOTIONAL damn it! If you piece out together his lethal hits, tech traps, and the entire list of knowledge checks, you would realize that his entire toolkit is meant to manipulate the opponents at every turn. But if you close your Emotional Ballot 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 Even if they are fully aware of this and have accumulated all the knowledge of things they should be cautious of, you can rest assured that you have either locked them out of a list of moves they need, or you have opened them up to a whole world of ungabunga. With all of that being said, this is what user Salamal should look like.